Are you having a hard time figuring out what to get dad for Father's Day? You should check out Row One Brand's Vintage Pictorum Gallery. They have America's best sports art. With over 7,200 historic sports prints, you're assured to find something unique for dad this Father's Day. Instead of a boring old tie, get him a historic baseball photo taken by Henry High Sandum at the historic Polo Ground Stadium in New York City during the 1894 Temple Cup. Or, if he's an NFL buff, check out the 1963 vintage NFL poster. These are so good looking that you'll be amazed how they turn out. Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one and save 15% off your order. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. There have been very few Olympic medalists that are also in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. In fact, we can think of only two, Jim Thorpe and Ollie Madsen. Thorpe grabbed the gold medal in both the decathlon and the pentathlon in 1912 at the Stockholm Games, while Madsen won a silver and bronze medal at the 1952 Olympics in Helsinki. Madsen took third in the 400-meter run and then was a member of the U.S. 4x400-meter relay team that took the silver that year. And ironically, both were members of the Chicago Cardinals football team. Thorpe's time with the Cardinals was brief, playing just a single game in 1928 in what would prove to be his final game played in the National Football League. Matson, however, considers himself a lifer in the Cardinals organization, joining the club as a first-round draft pick in 1952. At the time of his Olympic heroics in 1952, Matson was better known as the All-American halfback for the University of San Francisco. Matson led the Dons to an undefeated 9-0 season in 1951 and topped the nation in rushing with 1,566 yards, as well as in scoring with 126 points. His Olympic feats on the running track were even more surprising or amazing, since San Francisco did not even have a track team at that time. During his college days, Matson entered an AAU track meet in Berkeley, California, where he nearly lost to Jamaican Olympian Herb McKinley in the 440 and caught the eye of Stanford's track coach, Dink Templeton. Matson recalled later, Dink thought I should stick to track, but even though I had always dreamed of running in the Olympics, I made up my mind to play football. Let's fast forward two years later, and here was Matson contacting Templeton again, who was now in charge of the U.S. Olympic track team. Dink's words were not encouraging, as he told Matson, Ali, I don't think so. You laid off track much too long. Yet when the final numbers were reduced at the Olympic trials, Madsen had made the Olympic team by taking third in the 400 at the trials in Los Angeles. In Helsinki, he was the top U.S. finisher in the 400 and winning the bronze medal. And then as a member of the 4x400 relay team, Madsen missed the gold medal by just one-tenth of a second in an exciting photo finish. With the Olympics over, Madsen rushed back to the States on a 4,000-mile flight from Helsinki. He landed in Chicago, signed a contract with the Cardinals, and then drove up to the Wisconsin training camp with the 1952 College All-Stars for a few practices before the annual college football All-Star game this year with the Los Angeles Rams. Playing almost exclusively on defense and with very few practices, Matson and the All-Stars lost a tight 10-7 verdict to the Rams. Matson then reported to the Cardinals training camp under new head coach Joe Kuharik, who was also Ali's coach at the University of San Francisco the year before. As a 6'2", 210-pound halfback, Matson quickly demonstrated his skills as both a runner, returner, defender, and a receiver. In an early game against the Chicago Bears, Madsen returned a kickoff 100 yards for a score and then returned a fumble recovery 34 yards for another TD and a 21-10 Cardinals win. For the year, Ali Madsen gained 1,240 yards overall, led his team with 54 points, and shared NFL Rookie of the Year award honors with Hugh McElhenney. 
All of this was done while he played part of the year with a broken wrist that was suffered in the fifth game of the season. The Associated Press named him to its first team, All-Pro, All-Defensive Honor Squad. With platoon systems becoming popular in football at the time, Madsen made it clear in an interview with the Chicago Tribune exactly what he thought of the popular system. He said, I like defense, it isn't drudgery, and a defensive man lasts longer. But I also like to carry that football, so I prefer to play both ways. However, Madsen was inducted into military service on February 20th, 1953, and became the mainstay of the Fort Ord football team leading it to an 11-2 record with the only two losses coming to NFL teams. Madsen picked up 1,084 yards and just 78 carries during the season for an astounding average of 13.9 yards per attempt. Upon his discharge on September 29, 1954, Madsen promptly reported to the Cardinals and then topped the NFL with 1,666 all-purpose yards. But in 1954, Matson also suffered a serious head injury in a game against the Eagles. Earlier in the day, he had scored on a 50-yard punt return, and then later in the game, he was hit very hard and suffered a severe concussion that required hospitalization. This may have been one of the injuries that precipitated some difficulties that Matson endured later in life. As Matson continued to soar for the Cardinals, so did his paycheck. By 1958, it was reported that Ollie was the highest paid player on the Cardinals with a $20,000 a year salary. He also worked a part-time job with Ham's Beer. It was a well-deserved salary. At different times during the time in Chicago, Matson led the league in categories such as punt return yards, punt return touchdowns, longest punt and kickoff returns, and once again in 1956, he led the league in all-purpose yards. Each year during his time with the Cardinals, which would be 1952 and then 1954 through 58, Madsen was named first team All-Pro. He and his wife seemed to like Chicago as well. In 1957, after receiving reassurances from the Cardinals managing director, Walter Wolfner, that Madsen would never be traded, the couple, then with two young children, purchased a home on the south side of Chicago. Following the 1958 season, in which Madsen scored a career-high 60 points and enjoyed another spectacular season on both sides of the ball, he received quite the shock. In February of 1959, he learned that he had been traded to the Los Angeles Rams. But the trade was only part of the story. It was soon announced that Madsen had been traded for an unbelievable nine players, a number seen only once before in the NFL. Matson's initial reaction was one of shock as he told the Chicago Tribune, I've just finished making repairs to my house, but the big thing is that I wanted to finish my career with the Cardinals. Later in the day, he seemed happier when ch chatting with the San Francisco Examiner and Ali admitted, I just hope that I prove worthy of the men they're giving up. I'm looking forward with enthusiasm to at least three more good years of pro ball. I played hard for Chicago and have always tried to do my best wherever I've been. The trade itself took three days to complete. Pete Roselle, the business manager of the Rams, took the lead in negotiating the massive deal. Roselle, of course, later became the NFL commissioner for many years. At the time, Roselle said, I've been hoping there would be some way to get Matson to Los Angeles ever since I became business manager. Football players like Ali come along once in years and years. On the Chicago side, coach Frank Pop Ivy explained his reasoning for moving the invaluable Matson. Ivy said, the last thing we wanted to do was trade Matson, but we feel that in order to get worthwhile players, you have to give up something equally good. And then Walter Wolfner, the man who told Matson that he would never be traded added, our entire coaching staff feels that these additional top flight players will, without a doubt, make the Cardinals a strong contender this year. Although we know we gave up, in my book, the greatest back that ever played in the National Football League. The Cardinals received four starters, four other players, and one draft choice in 1959 for the valuable Matson. 
After his six seasons with the Cardinals, Matson had amassed 3,331 rushing yards on 761 carries, caught 130 passes for another 2,150 yards, and returned 48 punts for 524 yards. He also brought back 86 kickoffs for 2,453 more yards. And he scored an even 300 points for the Cards during that time frame. In the long run, neither team benefited from the massive trade since both clubs finished a woeful 2-10 in 1959. Over the last 60 plus years, there has been plenty of discussion about the wisdom of the trade for the Cardinals. During the 1959 season, now playing for the Rams, Matson exploded for 863 yards on 161 carries for a 5.4 rushing average. He caught 18 passes for 130 yards and scored six touchdowns. In addition, he continued to return punts and kickoffs and played such laudable defense that both UPI and the Sporting News named him to their all-pro teams. However, because of that sad finish of 2-10, and ten, Rams coach Sid Gilman was forced to resign after the 1959 season. After that time, Matson's career, at least on offense with the Rams, began to slide. Under coaches Bob Waterfield and Harlan Svar, the Rams went 9-29-1 from 1960 through 1962, and Matson's stint in L.A. was over. He spent the 1963 season in Detroit and then concluded his career with a three-year stay with the Eagles from 1964 through 1966, where he showed some of his old flashes of brilliance. During the 64 campaign, he rushed for 404 yards and grabbed 17 passes for 242 yards. When Ali Madsen finally retired after the 1966 season, he was second only to the great Jim Brown in NFL history with 12,799 all-purpose yards. Aside from being named an All-Pro seven times, he was also selected on the All-Decade team for the 1950s. In 1972, he was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and then in 1976, he was honored with his selection into the College Football Hall of Fame. For those who never saw Madsen run, a writer in 1973 described his talents, he said, Matson was a runner whose style was difficult to forget. Coupled with his speed was an almost awesome power, and when he ran over defenders at the line of scrimmage, he had the quickness to bolt by the secondary. In addition, he was almost impossible to ride out of bounds. Matson simply lowered his shoulder and punished the defender. Despite these numerous honors that elevated Matson to his rightful role as one of the most exciting players in NFL history, Matson is probably still remembered mostly for what we call the trade. In his later years, Matson often wondered about the trade and its aftermath. He once said, There are times I still ask myself, do I wish I had never been traded from Chicago? Apparently, the Rams were a mess under Coach Gilman and his two successors. And then in 2002, Ali's wife Mary spoke of the Los Angeles Rams situation when Ali was traded there. She said, he never had a shot here. We were so thrilled to be here, meaning Los Angeles, but it never felt right. So much resentment, dissension right away. The Rams sabotaged themselves. Indeed, during his four years with the Rams, the team won just 11 games. Perhaps there was resentment and likely there would be for any one player that was traded for nine others. But Matson kept his thoughts to himself during his playing career and did whatever was asked of him. Following retirement, Matson spent some time as a football coach in Los Angeles at a high school, where he was often surprised when students would discover tidbits about his great athletic career. In a 1973 interview, he said, talking about the students, they're beginning to know. They go to the library and look me up and they say, hey coach, why don't you tell us this? Or why didn't you tell us this thing or that thing about yourself? And I tell them, what I did isn't important now. What I am interested in is that you doing it. All I ask is they do their best. That's all any person can do, said Coach Madsen. Ollie Madsen always did his best, no matter what the circumstances. Sadly, he passed away on February 19, 2011, 
apparently after suffering dementia for some time, an illness that might be traced back to the injuries he suffered as a player. In tribute to Madsen, who excelled both as a player and a person, we thought we would repeat the very fitting comment from Joe Koharik, his old coach at San Francisco and with the Chicago Cardinals. Koharik accurately described Molly Madsen as the finest player I have ever seen or coached. Thank you for sharing your time with us today on the Sports History Network as we look back at the wonderful career of Hall of Famer Ali Madsen with both its ups and its downs. In our next episode, we'll share the very wacky story of a Chicago Bears quarterback who had the most unusual passing form in the history of football. He'll be just one of a few unusual characters you'll meet that we'll discuss who graced the team's roster during the long and entertaining history of the Chicago Bears. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. At the Sports History Network, we're all about sports yesteryear, and so we're so pleased to introduce you to Row One, an online memorabilia gallery and shop that brings your sports history to life anywhere. The Row One Gallery includes over 5,200 gorgeously reproduced prints of team posters, game program covers, game tickets, advertisements, and more in baseball, pro and college football, pro and college basketball, and more. And any gallery item may be printed in a variety of sizes on wood, metal, canvas, acrylic, or poster paper. And in Row One Shop, check out the thousands more of unique items with a retro and historical designs dating back to 1876 including t-shirts long sleeve shirts phone cases mugs blankets pillows towels and even shower curtains go to sportshistorynetwork.com row number one for access to the full row one catalog and for gallery prints and gift items plus get a 15 percent discount off all prints on the row one pictorum gallery with coupon code shn15 follow the link on the show notes